Um, I want to talk just, just for a hot a little bit about Tyree King. We don't know much beyond what the police have said. Um, Tyree King, for those who are not familiar, and if you are, if you do start, if you have been tweeting about him, if you do tweet about him, if you're sharing information, and I mean, it, it is, and I'm glad the family, and I'm glad through the, through the lawyer, the family did correct this. The correct spelling of his name is T-Y-R-E. There's not double E's. Um, but he was fatally shot yesterday in Columbus, Ohio, my 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 adult home, I consider my adult home. Um, he was a one of my one of my nieces went to this school. Um, he uh, was an eighth grader at Lyndon McKinley STEM Academy in Columbus. Um, you know, thirteen years old. He was um, shot and killed by the police. Um, they claimed they were searching for an armed robbery suspect, and they claimed that he fit the description, or he might have been one of the suspects. The, it's muddled allegedly, you know, um, and him and another person and they, you know, the cop in question claimed he reached for the gun, but then I was also reading that he tried to run and then he was shot. And so, um, the cop is now on administrative leave. They're, they're investigating. The family has retained counsel to, 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 you know, make sure the investigation is only exposed to, but there are issues with Columbus. Columbus has had when you look at the proportion of the population to police shootings, you know, a, a high number comparatively. Um, Tyree was shot multiple times. The the officer, the responding officer, um, the shooter, had previously, I believe it was in 2012, had been cleared of uh, fatally shooting a man uh, when they responded to his home about a person who would not leave. So they fatally, from what I read earlier, um, they fatally shot, he fatally shot, the same cop fatally shot someone who had called the police for help. Yeah. So this is based on only what we have from the police. There are no, there's no camera. There were no, um, they did not have on body cams. Um, and, 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 you know, this young man supposedly, like I said, allegedly was, it turns out it was a BB gun. Um, they're saying it looked like a handgun in his waistband. It was a BB gun. Um, I, I have, I've written about my feelings after Tamir Rice, and this is Columbus, Ohio, which is two and a half hours approximately um, southwest of Cleveland, where Tamir was murdered, um, also playing outside with a BB gun. Um, I'm not rushing to draw com comparisons and, you know, we don't really know all the facts and stuff, but at the same time, there are so many instances where people, in many cases, they're white people who, even if they reach for a gun, have pointed a gun and people say, oh, you can't, they're, they, they shoot them too. That is true. But disproportionately, more often than not, even with brandishing a weapon, you are more likely to survive an encounter with the police if you're white than if you're black. That is, that is, that is documented. They're facts not conjecture, the numbers exist. Um, it also made me think when they're like, well, they, they, they think he was a suspect or they think he might've fit the description. You know, we just saw the same case in Newark a few weeks ago with the young, with the little boy. I wasn't even say young man, he's a little boy. Um, little boy, they were chasing a suspect and then they ran upon the little boy and said, well, he fits the description and, you know, pulled out guns on him. Um, this whole fill is fit the description. You know, I thought it was a gun. <sighs> we need to do better, right? So we need, we need to do better. We need to do better. And we need to make sure that, that our children are able to come home. Um, now, was he doing something he was or was not supposed to do? I have no clue. Um, but does that mean that he deserved to lose his life? Absolutely not. And Columbus, I, I remember when I was in college, there were issues, there were, it was the same summer, there were some issues, there were some killings in the over the Rhine area in Cincinnati. I mean, there had been rioting in Cincinnati. And I remember they were afraid that they were gonna have the same situation in Columbus because they had, there was a, I remember there was one incident where someone had tried to run from the police, tried to hop a fence, and they were shot in the back. Um, and and we, we have these instances of people being shot while running away and there's still no charges bought. It's still, there's, the officers are still cleared, but it's just like, clearly 
what was the danger posed if they were running away? It's not a felon, not, you know, someone in the commission of a felony. It's not a felon fleeing a scene. I mean, it's, it's disheartening. It really is disheartening. Um, and, and, and it's like, you know, you hear the same exact language. It's almost like this is taught somewhere, some secret code school where police officers learn. And please save the, the, well, the good officers. Good officers do not stand by and watch other officers do what they do. I'm sorry. There are no clean hands in all of this. You may, you may not be the one to actually be pulling the trigger. You may, you know, follow protocol and procedure. And looking at what actually is protocol and procedure is another thing that we need to start doing when we're talking about our community activism. It's great to shut it down and protest, but what actually is the 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 protocol in cases? What 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 do the handbooks say? What are the administrative procedures in place? And that is what we need to also start demanding. Be if they need to be clarified, the new rules need to be adopted. Um, you know, there, there are mechanisms that, that, that mayoral offices, city councils, those in charge of police departments can take and put into place that do not involve, you know, widespread national legislative action. I mean, there are things that can be done administratively, like the chokehold policy that is in place in New York, which from reading the plain definition, um, you know, the officer who killed Eric Garner most definitely violated, you know, the Staten Island DA is an idiot, but that was an administrative procedure adopted after the killing of, uh, of Baez um, several, you know, a couple of decades earlier. So, so it is possible to get things put on, but now getting enforcement also, I mean, we have to continue to be engaged and demanding. But um, so one of the things that we're doing as Progressive Army, as a unit, as a team, as a family, as a community, um, and we are beginning to reach out to folks. Um, shout out to everyone who has been giving me panel suggestions. The, the pinned tweet I actually have on Twitter is actually for this project we're working on. But I do appreciate all the suggestions that we've been getting overall. So internally, you know, looking at the beautiful work that was done by me, we've been inspired. We've been inspired by the work of, you know, the platform released by Movement for Black Lives. We've been inspired by the work of so many. We're just talking about Asada's daughter, Sankofa, um, Justice League New York, uh, Million Hoodies. Um, Sean King has written several pieces and you know, there are so many people out there who have done such great work. There, there's so many warriors coming out of Ferguson and St. Louis area, you know, Atlanta, Chicago, uh, Baltimore. Um, shout out to people like Kwame Rose. And and I mean, there, there's so many great people doing, you know, this work all over the place, whether it's education. I mean, because we're looking beyond, like, even though this is a very pressing issue, we're, we're looking at initially this expansive program. Um, and we're in the process of reaching out and connecting with folks to, to come in and have these conversations with us and not just have conversations and, and retell the stories and relitigate, you know, various issues and discuss, you know, factors of systemic racism and stuff. But we need to get comfortable having these conversations out loud and in groups. Right. And then we also need to start getting comfortable with brainstorming ideas and, and ways of putting, you know, plans and platforms into action. Um, using things that have come out of uh, Movement for Black Lives, for example, with, with that platform, there, there, are action, there are action items there that local communities and groups can actually, you know, adopt and attempt to implement and work towards. And these are, these are plans that actually, these, these are things that actually better the life of the community, right? And this should be the type of thing that our, especially our elected officials, people who say they're supposedly serving us, should really be interested in helping to bring to fruition. So, I mean, it's actually, I thought, I thought I was going to be able to do a little bit better with talking about Tyree King, but like the fact that, again, we have another young man, the same, same, my son turns 13 in December. Um, I just, you know, finished drive, picking up him and his two friends from skating this week, and they're, they're both turning 13 in the next couple of weeks. It's, it's fucking scary. Excuse my language. It is, it is scary. It is scary. And and even if, like, like I said, even if he did do something, it doesn't mean that that's worth his life being taken. I mean, you know, folks always want to say boys will be the boys. We got people raping folks and getting out of jail after three months. And yet, you know, a little boy with a BB gun is murdered. And everyone is just like, eh, that's what he gets. Hmm, whatever. Shouldn't have had a BB gun. 
um, there's a whole story. I, the mayor, the mayor of Columbus, made a comment earlier about how this is what happens when we have a a, a culture that is fixated on guns. Um, I'm guessing, you know, meaning the young man, the young boy playing with a gun. Um, I would say that this is what happens when we have a culture that is fixating on excusing bad police behavior, on poor judgment. And um, when you have police officers who have multiple uh, killings and most people say poli most police officers rarely ever discharge a gun, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but those who do, we, we, we need to protect against, we need to protect the liberties and we need to protect against the situations where those who do, do so inappropriately, do so without provocation and do so without, 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 without thought. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little, it's a little tough. And I really didn't want to end on a low note tonight, but I mean, it's real. This is real. And this is, this is the type of thing that we got to think about all the time. Like, you know, anytime my kid wants to run outside and go play manhunt, I've, I've talked about this before. Um, at Christmas, Max got a, Max got a paintball gun. We like paintball. Um, we used to live in West Virginia. He used to go, you know, it was very hard for me to let him use guns. Um, why would you let a child use a gun? And know because I was living in West Virginia. That's what people do. They let their kids go shooting for fun. And to try to explain to other people why he was not allowed to do that, it was, a, it was it's a completely different culture. It's a different, completely different way of thinking. But it's not that that dare target or shoot someone there either. Um, there was a young man either a year or two ago who was actually targeted by the cop on his block who just didn't like him. His friends had actually played a prank on the cop. The cop chased and ran them down and picked a fight with this kid. Basically, this kid, he was 18. Um, picked a fight with him on the side of a road and they tussled and again the cop was off duty it was over a prank of some one of the boys put a pair of shorts a pair of a uh, uh, boxer briefs or something like that on his car you know goofing around and the boys admitted they did it but he still detained the other boy that he just didn't like him and he ended up shooting and killing him he claimed it was self-defense but you know it's there are so many different egregious scenarios that continue to happen and the problem is that we give people a badge we don't give them the resources in terms of trainings in some scenarios, we, we don't check, you know, meaningful actions in terms of actual complaints and, and abuses of power. Sure, people do lie on people in power. There are kids who've lied on their teachers. I mean, all types of habit. But to not even consider the possibility that there are bad cops out there who are bad actors who are abusing the system, who are abusing the power, it, 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 it opens up more damage than, than, than so-called protecting the good ones. And, and we really need a culture change. I mean, we, the system needs to be completely stripped, shocked and, and rebooted in some other format. Um, so yeah, so please definitely stay tuned. Um, I think we are aiming for uh, two weeks from, we're, we're, talk, we're thinking about doing these on Friday nights. Um, we'll, you know, round table of hosts and guests uh, we're going to have some writing out. I mean, it's a big project. And, and if you have any guys, if you have any ideas, suggestions, um, guest ideas, tips, if you think you have a piece maybe that you would like for us to publish, I mean, you know, shoot it out to us um, and, and let's see what we can do. I mean, we need to do our part to help be a part of the conversation and help, you know, continue to, to, to drive the narrative change that needs to happen to move the needle forward. Um, so that we're not sitting here having yet another conversation about another, um, I mean, he's not even in high school. He won't even, you know, I mean, it's, 